Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's EV5 2015 release webinar. My name is Ejin, and I'm the product marketing manager for Adams and EV5 at MSC Software. So today's presenters will be Dan and Cloud. So they are both our senior development engineers and they have many years of um, experience with the product, with EV5, as well as um, working with the customers in different industries from heavy equipment, aerospace to automotive. In today's webinar, Dan and Cloud will give you a brief overview of uh, what is EV5 to those who are not familiar with this product. And then we're gonna talk about some of the new features that we have introduced in the 2015 release, which is which was already um, which has already been released a few weeks ago. At the end of today's webinar, there will be a Q&A session. So if you have any question for EV5 the product or the presentation, please type the questions down in a Q&A window. So we will try to get them answered either during the Q&A session or following the event. Okay, now I'm going to pass the presenter to Dan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are. Um, I'll start with the UV5 overview. For the benefit of those who may be brand new to UV5 or have never used it before, UV5 is a collection of software tools for system level simulation and analysis. It is a block diagram and connection methodology. The physical equations for the mathematical model are encapsulated by components that are represented by icons. The component icons in a schematic are related by connection lines, the connection lines representing the data flows between the components. The components along with the connections and the data that you provide constitute a system level math model. The inputs to an easy five model would include uh, parameter values such as orifice, diameters or pipe lengths, physical properties, uh, correlations of such things as uh, friction factors, uh, tabular correlations for complex geometries, such as tabular correlations of flow versus pressure drop, and other types of parameter values. Uh, it also includes initial conditions and boundary conditions, component connectivity, and then after the model topology has been defined, one needs to define the analysis type, be it uh, transient simulation or steady state analysis or some sort of linear analysis. And then the outputs that are requested from that analysis. The outputs depend upon the type of system being modeled and what type of analysis is performed. But for a typical transient nonlinear simulation, you would be getting plots of time varying system parameters such as uh, pressures in the system, temperatures, uh, flows, displacements, velocities, and heat transfer. EC5 has been developed continuously for the past 40 years now. It originated at Boeing and in 1986 was commercialized with the first graphical user interface. In 2002, it was purchased from Boeing by MSC Software, and uh, development has continued to the present time. EV5 models can be simple models from a single discipline, or they can be complex models from multiple disciplines. Here is a, a list of some of the types of physics that can be modeled with EV5. Today, we'll be focusing on uh, hydraulics and electric power systems. Now, if an engineer has a 
detailed understanding of the equations governing the system that they want to model, they can use primitive mathematical components from the general purpose library to build a low-level model. In this example, we have a spring mass damper system. Here are the equations that one could formulate for that. And then using general purpose library primitives, you can formulate these equations. Each of the blocks in this schematic diagram represent one of the mathematical operations in this uh, set of equations. You can also formulate an easy 5 model using what we call higher level components or system level components. It's the same physics, same block, the same uh, free body diagram, but now we're capturing that in a single library component. In this case, the user would not need to know the detailed equations that are that went into this model. They simply need to know the parameters, the mass, the spring constant, the damping or friction parameters. And from that, a model can be built and analyses performed. Another example, we have a hydraulic actuator and a rack and pinion. Each of these are represented by a single a single easy five component, the one for the hydraulic actuator and one for the rack and pinion. The connection lines represent the data flows between the two components. Together they constitute a system level model of the hydraulically actuated rack and pinion. The user just needs to have some reasonable design parameters, at least reasonable estimates of those design parameters, such as bore and stroke, for the hydraulic actuator, gear ratio for the rack and pinion. Now going back to the situation where for a component you know the detailed physics and the detailed equations that go into constituting that math model, a user can use uh, either Fortran or C and formulate their own code block. We call that a user code block that can be incorporated into the system level math model. So in this example, uh, we have some inputs, a state, and a couple of variables, and some equations. These inputs and variables can then be connected into the model. EZ5 has a number of predefined application libraries which are commercially available. Of course, I've already mentioned the general purpose library, which comes with EZ5. There are also a number of application libraries that are supplied by MSC. Some of these are separately licensed. These include the thermal hydraulics library, gas dynamics library for, multi for modeling uh, pneumatics and environmental control systems, the multi-phase fluid library for modeling cryogenics, and refrigeration cycles, the aerospace vehicle library, and the new electrical systems library, which Bob will be discussing shortly. There are also commercial third-party libraries from Ricardo, powertrain library, the fuel cell library, and the system engine, internal combustion engine library. Now, EZ5 users can use the same uh, methodologies that Claude and I use for developing the commercial libraries, you can use those same tools for creating your own libraries for in-house or in-company encapsulation and reuse. For example, GE has a number of custom libraries which are used throughout the world within their company for modeling uh, gas turbine systems, and power generation systems. Now, that's a brief overview of EC5, and now we'll talk about the enhancements for EC5 2015. I'll talk about 
functional mock-up interface and the 64-bit GUIs and then turn it over to Claude. Functional mock-up interface is a protocol for interfacing software tools from different disciplines and often from different vendors. Uh, there's a website that you can go to to read about it, or you could just uh, Google uh, functional mock-up interface and get several different uh, possible sources of information for this. Functional mock-up interface, or FMI, has a master program which incorporates or communicates with uh, slaves, which are called functional mock-up units. Uh, the functional mock-up units, if they're connected to each other, can also communicate with each other. EZ5 can export a slave FMU representation of an EZ5 model, or it can import one or more slave FMUs into an EZ5 model, in which case the EZ5 model becomes the FMI master. The FMI specification supports two different modes. One is co-simulation, where each FMU solves or integrates its own equations. That's what EZ5 2015 is supporting. There is also a second mode called model exchange, where the master solves, becomes the solver for the slave FMUs. Uh, that is in work for EZ5 and will be supported in a release in the near future. For those of you who've ever exported a Simulink S function or a DLL from EZ5, the process of exporting a, F, a slave FMU from EZ5 is very similar. It requires a library license feature from the external interface library. There is a new component in the external interface library, or I'll call that from here on out, the XI library. This component FM represents the connections and interface to the FMI master. So if you have an EZ5 model that you want to convert into an FMU, you add this component to your model, make the connections to and from the model, uh, to and from the FM component. Connections from the FM component represent data that flows from the FMI master to the FMU. And conversely, connections to the FM component represent data flows from the FMU to the FMI master. Once this component is connected, you simply go to the EZ5 build menu, select export model as, and there's a couple of new items in the submenu for exporting models. Detailed, destruction, detailed instructions are contained in the external interface library user guide. If you would like to import an FMU into EZ5, you do that in a different way. You start from the EZ5 Add Components panel, and from the library list, you select Extensions. And there will be a functional mockup unit icon in the Extensions group. Add this icon, add this component to your model, open the component data table. Now, at, when you first open this component data table, it will be very generic because you haven't yet specified what FMU you're importing. You do that by clicking on the Select Configure button, and that will take you, walk you through a process for completing the FMU import. And when you're done with that, you will have the 
additional inputs and additional states and variables which are specific to the FMU. The documentation for FMU import is accessed from the info button in the extension component data table. Next, I'll briefly talk about the 64-bit GUIs, which are available with EZ5 2015. Now, in previous versions of EZ5, even though you could create 64-bit model executables or export 64-bit DLLs from EZ5, the GUI itself was 32-bit. With EZ5 2015, you now have 64-bit GUIs available for Windows 64 and three Linux platforms, Red Hat 5.7, Red Hat 6.3, and SUSE 11 Service Pack 2. These are full 64-bit implementations. To take advantage of this, for those of you who have uh, your own in-house libraries that you've developed and are using, you will need to port those libraries from 32 to 64 bit. It's just pretty much in the same way that you would need to do if you were porting from, say, Windows to one of the Linux platforms. It's the same sort of process. It takes about one minute per library. The instructions for doing that are on page two of the 2015 release notes. There is a 64-bit matrix algebra tool which can now be seamlessly started from the EZ5 GUI or spawned from the 64-bit EZ5 GUI. 64-bit EMX files can be seamlessly exported from EZ5 and imported into MAP. An EMX file is just a, a DLL representation, a DLL that can be loaded into the matrix algebra tool. And from that, you can script analyses or do a no number of different types of uh, scripting operations. And an EMX file is, again, just a DLL that can be loaded into MAP. When you export an EMX from EZ5, then you have a DLL representation of the EZ5 model that can be loaded into MAT. This gives improved performance for analyses that utilize EMX files. For EC5 2013, there is still a 32-bit Windows installer available if you need to use that. But we encourage everyone to migrate to 64-bit um, installers and installations as soon as they can. And with that, I am finished, and Claude will take over. I'll talk briefly just about some improvements that were made to the thermal hydraulics library, and then I'll talk about the new app electric uh, systems library. Okay, so uh, there were a few additions made to the hydraulics library in EZ5. The first thing is the addition of acceleration forces to the transient momentum pipes. Uh, so this means uh, the acceleration could be added as an arbitrary vector to those pipes. So if you have a situation where your pipes are in a vehicle that's accelerating, uh, this will now be taken into account. Um, another improvement is uh, the an expanded solenoid modeling capability. You can now put in some uh, information for magnetics in a, uh, a, ser a uh, uh, servo system which is actuated by a solenoid. So that's been added. 
We also have two new fluids for aerospace applications, both type 5 uh, phosphate esters, which are SkyGirl PE5 and HiJet 5. And also, a new configuration was added for this six-way valve that's in the hydraulics. And I won't talk any more about that because I want to continue on to the uh, electric systems library. <clears throat> this is a new library for EZ5 2015. And it's for modeling electrical systems, uh, not so much electronics in the terms of modeling PC boards or things, but more in terms of modeling uh, large electrical systems or power systems or electromechanical systems or control systems. And the library uses time domain based models. It's not phase based at the present time, but that's not available. So it's uh, not so suited for modeling huge grid networks, but it is uh, quite suited for modeling uh, some electrical power systems and getting a lot of detail about the uh, frequency domain, uh, the uh, time domain performance of your systems. And this library replaces the Ricardo Electrical Systems Library, which is which has not actually been available from MSC for several years. So if anybody's using the, elect the Ricardo Electric Systems Library, that this could be replaced with the EZ5 library, which has all the functionality that's in there and have some extra functionality. So what are some potential modeling uses for this? Well, uh, some uses would be for power switching networks where you have uh, power systems that require switching. You, you can use it for uh, AC and DC motor actuation, so for uh, control surfaces or robotics, uh, you can use it for that. If you have systems that are coupled with hydraulics or mechanical systems that are powered by electric motors or run generators or have control systems that are designed with uh, electrical controls, that can be also modeled with this library. Uh, it also does do electrical grid simulation, and you can do quite, I'll show you some ex an example of that, uh, where you can actually do a fairly detailed analysis of an entire electrical supply network. It, and it also does uh, an electrical generation. Um, also, if you are interested in hybrid or electrical vehicle design, uh, a number of the components in the electrical systems library, which I'll show you in a moment, are very well suited for modeling the components in these types of vehicles. So in automotive systems, some example applications uh, would be charging or accessory power systems, and uh, you need to control voltage or current, battery systems, and the drive systems also can be modeled in these the kinds of vehicles. In aerospace, there are a number of applications, uh, actuation of control surfaces, uh, the analysis of safety margins, and uh, for instance, uh, auxiliary power generation. This picture shows an APU there. Um, for wind energy, you, you could uh, model a number of the components in a wind energy system, not only the, the components in the electrical components in the uh, turbine itself, but also the, the switching and power regulation uh, equipment and the grid that, and transformers that, that send the power out. And uh, investigate transients, for instance, during switching events, which are actually quite significant in a number of these systems. So what is in the electrical systems library? And we have a, a number of uh, machines, DC machines, you have shunt field motors or generators, uh, permanent magnet motors, uh, 
the brushless DC motor, and commutated machines. And uh, many of these machines are uh, multiple or single phase. You can select what you want. For synchronous machines, we have motors and generators. Induction machines, capacitor start run motors, and a stepper motor for doing uh, actuation. And those pictures up at the, those diagrams on the upper right there are actually from our documentation. Uh, then there's a selection of, of uh, types of transformers and uh, a number of ways to model transmission lines. You can use, either use lump parameter models or a three-phase distributed parameter line. So you can get whatever accuracy traded off with simulation speed that you want. And uh, there's a number of uh, passive components for loads and some voltage sources, such as a battery and then a fixed AC source if you don't want to go through modeling uh, generation or battery. As far as uh, electrical control, there are uh, there are a number of components available. One of these are circuit breakers uh, and simple switches. We have mechanically uh, coupling aids to as a convenience in the library. So we have a way to convert rotary to linear motion. There's a drive shaft in there, an inertia a gearbox, and uh, a clutch. This is actually a triple S clutch that you're looking at uh, in the next to the right there. And that that is uh, substantially modeled. You can model that with a uh, the clutch component. As far as electronics, there's a, a good selection of general purpose components for modeling Electronics, we have pulse, the pulse width modulator inverters for changing uh, AC uh, to DC current, uh, rectifiers, or DC to AC. Uh, there's the sign or triangle pulse width modulator inverters. There are stepper motors controllers, uh, DC to DC switch mode converters like Buck or Buck Boost, um, SCRs. Uh, and GTOs um, and uh, H-bridge driver for uh, motors. And there's a number of uh, primitive components for modeling uh, electronics that include diodes, a thyristor, inductor, a capacitor, a resistor. And if I get a chance, I'll show you some of those. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, do a short demo, and I'm going to bring up Easy Five here. Okay, so uh, let's see. So I don't know if, how many of you have seen Easy Five, but I'm actually going to uh, build a short, a small model and show you how you can go about doing that. So here are, the, here are the components available, and this is the electrical systems library. There are a number of components available in Easy5, uh, libraries available in Easy5 here. So I'm using the electrical systems library, and I'm just gonna drag in this component here, which is just the global properties, which just tells me what unit system I'm using. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a rectifier, and you can see this. Here's a picture, just a picture of a full wave rectifier, and see if we can build this up in Easy5 and get some data out of it. Okay, so. Uh, First of all, we're going to need some diodes. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to the basic circuit elements, and I'm going to pick a couple of diodes. Okay. And to get them to look like the picture, I'm going to turn them around. 
Let's go that way. Like that. We'll turn them around like that. And then I'm going to need a couple of capacitors, filter capacitors for each side. So I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one here. Okay. And then I'm going to need a load. So I need the resistor. Here's a resistor. I'm going to put the resistor here and turn it around so we can get it to look like the picture. Okay, so now let's see if I can uh, connect the, the electrical signals from the diode to the capacitor. What I'm going to do is select this terminal here. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to select this terminal here and connect it to here. And the menu that I see shows me I have some choices about on the diode which side I want to connect to this capacitor. So since it doesn't, it's not really clear which side I would like to connect. So I want to connect this terminal. And the connection is now made. And you'll see the line draw like that. <clears throat> Even though this says this is called the negative terminal, it is where positive current flow will positive uh, voltage will appear, as that's a convention with a diode. Okay, now I've connected the capacitor there, and I'm going to connect that, the positive voltage, to the load. So I connect this to here. And again, it doesn't know which side of the resistor I'd like to connect, so I'm just going to connect it to the inlet of the resistor. Then I will connect the outlet of the resistor to the capacitor here. I'm going to move that here. Let's move these so they look a little nicer. There. Okay, and then I'm going to connect this capacitor there. Okay, now I have more or less the complete circuit. And in order to join these together to make a junction, I'm going to add a junction component here. And I'm going to connect this part of the junction to there. And it's going to ask me which part of the junction I want to connect. OK, and then here, I will connect down to here. And there was no choice there because there was only one place left on the junction. That's that part. And now I need to add a voltage source. So I'm going to go back to my miscellaneous group, and here's a voltage source that I can use. And I'm going to connect the voltage source in, into the junction. Whoops. Uh, that's because that didn't connect because the voltage source, unlike all of these other components, is, is uh, three phase by default. So we're going to change that down here to single phase. Now it's a single phase voltage source. Now it will connect. There we go. <clears throat> so uh, let's. Now, I haven't put any parameters into this model, but it doesn't really need any. The diodes really don't need any parameters. The capacitors do. Uh, let's put in a nice big capacitance into these capacitors. So here are the inputs, and the capacitance is in farad. So I'm going to put in. 0.01, which is actually 10,000 microfarads. And we'll do that with this one, too. Right. And then uh, let's put in 50 ohms, say, for, for this resistor. OK, and if I just check the voltage source, it's set by default to 110 volts, 60 cycles. Sorry for all you in Europe. <laughs> But you can change this. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do now is create the executable, which what it's doing is it's translating all of these uh, components into their mathematical equivalents into computer language, which is Fortran in this case, compiling and linking that into a program, which will now run. So all we have to do is say what we want to look at. So here I'm going to look at the simulation form on this side over here. So 
I'm going to run this to one second. And I'm going to look at, make it a little more detailed so our sine waves look nice. Now, you can, at this point, I could just run the simulation and I could just plot everything uh, and then just look at all the results. But it's kind of nice to set your plots up beforehand if you only want to look at a few things. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to select a couple of, of outputs. So I'm going to look at the capacitor outputs here. Let's look at the capacitor output there. And then I'm going to look at the load voltage, which is coming out of the source here. And I'm going to ask that to be overplotted. Okay. Now let's just take a look at what we get. So if we run the simulation. Simulation is completed. I'll move the plots over here. Here are the plots that we just got. Uh, so we can take a we zoom in here. Let's just zoom in on a bit of this and take a look. Okay, so here it looks kind of what you would expect. The positive voltage is here. It's rectified fairly well. And the negative voltage is down here. Rectified fairly well. And the red in between is the load voltage. So that's an example of how you would build a simple, very simple model in Easy 5. Let's take a look at something that's a little more complex. Okay, let's get to so you can see it. Okay. So this is uh, built with the electrical systems library. And this is a complete uh, power system. Here I've got uh, the compressor and turbine model. And if you look inside here, I've got, uh, I've made some customized components, which are just Fortran code, which I coded up. Uh, but you can also use components out of another library, the gas dynamics library, EC5, if you wanted a more detailed model. And I have a controller here that I've made on the uh, turbine so that uh, I can control the speed of the turbine uh, by controlling the combustion heat. Okay, and then it runs through the, the drive shaft runs through a clutch into, and that drives the generator. There's a delta Y step up transformer here to, and it's gonna run at about roughly 100 kilovolts. That's gonna run through a 100,000 meter uh, high voltage line, stepped back down, and then through a low voltage uh, distribution line, and then that's going to go out to the consumer load, which is out here. Now, uh, what I've done in this simulation is I put in an emergency breaker here. And you can't just, of course, in the power system, you can't just open a breaker because you'll destroy half the system. And uh, so you've got to provide some kind of alternative emergency load if you want to actually open the system to dump the current. So this breaker component, I'm going to look inside of it. It's actually um, a some. It, there's some current sensing electronics here that's built with the general purpose library in Easy Five that is available uh, with every copy of Easy Five, and I've got that to run this to a uh, and this will trip the circuit breaker when the current goes over 500 amps in the main line. And what it will do is open this, the main circuit breaker and it will shut this other uh, breaker here, uh, giving us an alternate path to a, a, load, uh, a load where we can dump the current and prevent the, um, the, uh, the disastrous transients in the system. Okay, and this takes about 
three or four minutes to simulate. So we're not going to have time to do that here, but I can show you I just did that um, just right before this presentation, and I can show you some of the results here. So here's we're looking at the load voltage, and at a little after four seconds, what happens is I've I've created a situation in the model where there's uh, a short circuit. So what happens is the load power C goes down to zero. The dump power comes up because the circuit breaker is is being is uh, closing there for the dump load. You can see the um, the load voltage and the current um, are shutting down in the main line. And you can look at, I've got a number of things we can look at. We can look at shaft torque uh, and what's some um, what's going on in the compressor and the turbine here. And I can see, for instance, um, if I look at the turbine speed, during the transient, there's a slight, the angular speed, there's a slight change, but it's fairly well controlled. Um, if I didn't have that emergency breaker in there, uh, you would see all, something a lot worse because the control system might not be able to handle adjusting the speed for this uh, system. And I can look at the high voltage here, check uh, at all times the generator is producing roughly the same high voltage here and it's producing about uh, 22, 2300, 2300 some uh, kilowatts. And then down here, though the power, even though the, the speed is regulated fairly well, as you can see down here, I can, uh, so, so this is a, a really good way to uh, examine in detail what happens in a system like this. Okay, so that would conclude the uh, presentation. Okay, thank you, Claude. So I'm going to take the control back at this point.